Hi, my name's Mike and welcome to my first tutorial where we're going to create a project for writing our own game on the iPhone. I've been writing apps now for a few months on the iPhone and having lots of fun doing that and I decided that I wanted to give it a go and write a game on the iPhone. So I've had a look around and I've decided that after looking at examples like Crash Landing um, that Apple provide and you can download, that I will use OpenGL and have a go at creating my own simple game. It's going to be simple um, because I'm, I'm learning OpenGL as I go. It's not something I've used before. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to stick to a 2D game, two-dimensional game, rather than worrying about 3D at the moment. Maybe that's something I'll tackle later on, but for the moment, as I learn, I'm going to stick to 2D. So I'm going to have a don't know how many tutorials yet it's going to take, but uh, I'm going to, as I learn and, and actually make some progress myself, I'm going to share my, my experience and what I've learned through these tutorials. Um, these are the first screencasts that I've done, so uh, if I make any mistakes, I apologise. Hopefully I'll, uh, I'll get better and slicker at these as I go along. But as I said a little while ago, the key item that we're going to cover in this tutorial is to create our project. So create a project in which we can start to draw things to the screen and we can then use that as a framework to build our game. So by the end of this tutorial, we'll have a project and we'll actually be printing a sprite onto the screen or a graphic onto the screen. And we'll then stop there and we'll then move on in the next tutorial to look at some of the other technologies and some of the other things that we need to worry about. So sprite sheets, um, being able to move sprites around, uh, collision detection and all the things that uh, I think I'm obviously going to have to deal with as I go through and I start writing this game. So one of the things that you'll need to have at your, at your side, if you like, um, is a copy of the crash landing example that Apple provide. So in my folder here, I've got crash landing downloaded. Uh, and the reason is there are a couple of great uh, classes in here that I will be using as part of setting up our project that just deal with some of the complexities of getting images from your image.png files uh, into a texture, which is what you use when you're working with OpenGL. So we'll be grabbing those from in here, so it's handy having that available. Um, I've also got a graphics folder here, which I've got my little player PNG file in. So this is going to be the graphic that we're gonna have and, sorry, we're gonna use and display on the screen by the end of this tutorial. So, Let's get started and what I'm going to do is I'm going to inside Xcode create a brand new project. So my new project is going to be an OpenGL ES application and this is handy because it, it gives us a lot of the wiring already done for being able to get a view up in the iPhone, uh, be able to render to it as well using OpenGL. So uh, I'm not going to go through too much of the detail in this, I'm still working out some of it myself, um, but it gives us a good framework to start to build from. So I'll select that and I'm going to give it a name, which is going to be tutorial one. So this gives us our standard project. And in here we can see that there's a few things that have been created for us already, as is usual in Xcode and we're using templates. There's a delegate that has been created and been given the same name as our um, application. And there's also a view which has been created. And this view is what has been wired up um, to our main window and is actually going to be what we write to. So if we have a look under the resources folder, we can see there's a main window.nib and uh, that's already got the wiring necessary to point the view that it has to this particular class that we have here. Um, we can also see that there are some frameworks that have been loaded as well. So OpenGLES is obviously one we're going to be using uh, and Quartz Core is in there as well. So we've really got the foundations that we need now, but obviously we need to have a look and see what's uh, in there that we can keep and what is in there that we don't need. Now, at this point, the actual application works already. Um, so if I select simulator, because we want to run it on the simulator, and I run the application, we will see that when it comes up, it actually already does something, which is to rotate this color cube in the middle of the screen. So the app is actually pretty much there in terms of writing things to the screen and animating them. But obviously we want to do our own thing inside here, which is have our game. So there's gonna be some code that we need to remove and replace with our own. So I'll stop that and we can start to have a look at some of the code that we actually need to worry about and we actually need to change. 
Now, inside the delegate, there really isn't anything for us to change. All this is doing is within our GL view, and GL view is basically an instance of our EAGL view, um, we are setting the animation interval, which is a property that has been defined for us and we're setting it to this one divided by 60, and this is giving us basically 60 frames per second. Um, and that's how many times we are going to be redrawing our scene, if you like, on screen is 60 times every one second. And that should give us a really nice, smooth animation uh, with no glitching and no, no sort of jumps between one, one part of the screen and the other. Um, or the other thing it does within the application did finish loading method is it just runs this method called start animation. Uh, and as we go and have a look inside uh, EAGL view, we'll see what start animation does. But for the moment, there's nothing to change in here. We just leave the delegate as it is, uh, as all of our changes are gonna be done in the EAGL view. So if we go inside the EAGL view, we can see here that there are a number of classes already created for us. We have the init with coder, uh, which gets called when this particular view is created. Because it's being created from within inside a nib file, then init with coder is the method that is called um, within our class. And in here, it just does some configuration work for us. So it just sets up the um, GL layer, which has been created and what we're gonna to write to, it sets that up with a number of parameters. If you go and look this up in the documentation, it tells you all about what these parameters are and what they do. But for our needs, we can just leave them exactly as they've been um, put in for us inside the template. And we can just move on to, to looking at other aspects of this. Um, again, inside our init with coder, we are setting the animation level. So we're giving it a default setting in case uh, it isn't set elsewhere, which is just good practice. And it's also in here where later on we're going to have more of our initialization code. So the code that we are going to use to set up OpenGL, for example. So in here, we will have our OpenGL init code. Okay, I'm not going to put that in just yet. We'll, we'll put that in in uh, just a while. If we carry on moving down, we'll see that we've got a draw view method. Now, this is where all of the drawing action goes on, as the name would imply. So inside draw view, we are actually drawing things to the screen. And at the moment, this may all look a little bit confusing, um, but this OpenGL that we can see in here is actually drawing that colored box and causing it to rotate. Okay. Now, a lot of this, therefore, we don't need. We want to actually create our own information in here. <clears throat> Sorry, our own um, graphics in here for our game. So there are some things in here we need to delete. Um, we can delete these two arrays at the top because they are just defining the dimensions of that box that we're seeing spinning around. And it's also defining the colors in the box as well. Um, and that's why we're getting that colored box being drawn on the screen. So we can delete that, we don't need that. We want to keep the um, next three commands because these commands are defining the frame buffers for us. So there's a there's a render buffer and there's a frame buffer. And the frame buffer is almost like a an off the screen area um, that has the same dimensions as the screen or is configured to have the same dimensions as the screen. And when you write anything or you draw anything, sorry, that's where you write it to. You write it to that frame buffer, not directly to the screen itself. When you finish then drawing everything to that frame buffer, you swap that frame buffer onto the screen. Okay, and then what's on the screen, you swap into the frame buffer. So now you can see on the screen what has just been drawn in the background. And then while that's being displayed, you draw in the background again, the next version of the scene and you swap them again. And you just keep swapping these scenes over. Um, and it really is just so that you're not trying to read from the screen memory um, as it's trying to draw on screen as well as you're trying to write to the screen memory. Uh, if you try and do that, you can have some timing issues and you can get some tearing and some artifacts on the screen. It just doesn't look very good. So it's good practice to have, you know, flicker free animation and flicker free updates if you're looking at one view and you're updating the other and you switch them. So this here, what we're doing is we're saying that the buffer we're going to bind to, in other words, the buffer we're about to write to is the frame buffer. Okay, and we can see here we've got this thing called the view frame buffer, which is set up in another method inside our class. Um, GL viewport, this is setting up the viewport that we're going to be looking at for GL. So 00, zero is the bottom left hand corner of the view. And then we have the backing width and the backing height. And they are both defined um, when you're creating your context and your view buffers. They are created at that point. 
The next piece of code that we have here around uh, matrix projection, model views, and that kind of thing, we're gonna see those things again in a moment when we actually set our 